Hi, everyone, and welcome back to this week's interview. And this week, uh, we have Hannah Silvia Wadmore. <laughs> Hannah Silvia, that's, that's your name, right? Uh, Hannah Silva. Yes, that's my Han name. Hannah Silva with us from Sweden. Uh, and we never met before. This will be the first time we speak. And also, of course, I have no idea what's, uh, what's on the interviewer's mind or in heart. So I'm really excited about it. And from now on, you have the word. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is very exciting. Um, my first question, it's about uh, something that I've noticed when I, uh, I try to help groups of people uh, free their minds in different ways for example you are a psychologist or something like this right yes I am a psychologist uh, and I also help uh, creative people overcome blockages and self-doubt uh, by developing their intuition uh, so in those sorts of circumstances I've noticed that uh, many people in uh, in my country than in Sweden, but I can imagine it's the same like all over Europe. Uh, but especially in Sweden, people are, um, and they are individualized. They are, are, are thinking from an individual's perspective, always mm -hmm. they, they kind of view themselves as an, an entity, as an island. And uh, from my perspective, what I really need to flourish is to uh, think from a collective perspective, right? Uh, mm -hmm. To find a collective where they can give support and obtain support and so on. Um, mm -hmm. So my question is, like, how do I help them uh, go from an individualized perspective to a more collective perspective? Like, how do I help them understand the game what is really beautiful about you is that when I see you, I see you have this feeling of including, that you have this feeling of, of oneness and, and being together in rising together and communities and, and this nurturing thing. It is so deep rooted within you. <laughs> it's easy to see and feel and it's beautiful. I, it's magical. I absolutely love it. For many people who are incarnated in this time, they have splittings and they come from situations where the whole includedness is something that never existed uh, for them. So they basically don't know how to do it. The first thing we need to do is we need to accept the differences between people and their different journeys. And the second step is that when we learn them to gain self-love and self-trust, like doing the individual journey, that is step one. But when they reach that point, they need to become conscious about, we need to make them aware of the highest goal is the oneness, right? Because as long as you are individual, you're still separated. And as long as you're separated, you are not whole, you're not one. <laughs> so it's to um, let each person know that they have their own color, they have their own space, they have their own individuality. But they bring that to the table where they can meet other people with other qualities so we together become a whole. Um, I think the way that it's communicated out is kind of important all after which type of person you would talk to. If you would talk to somebody with, like me who has been alone the most of my life, <laughs> it will be something like, Elisa, you have your role. And uh, your role, your color, where, what you stand for is what you're supposed to do. But you cannot do that alone because you have all these aspects within you that doesn't have... Um... There was a call. <laughs> <Do> you... <laughs> this always happens. Someone <laughs> wanted to, <laughs> to, to inter get your interfere. Attention. They want to be like collective. <laughs> yes. So um, it, it would be this thing of of letting me know that I have my own space in my own time to develop, but I need to bring my part to the table and to allow me to see that I need other people. And I need them because uh, if I should do everything myself, first of all, it was never meant this way on earth. <laughs> it's not natural. <laughs> Second of all, 
it will be way too hard. So it's to learn these people to see the qualities uh, within a community. And, but often they are traumatized, right? By, mm. by people and communities and families. So for them, everything they can link their consciousness still and the memories, the mind mapping is, is, is pain and suffering and heaviness and, oh, you know, they always steam me wrong, blah, blah, blah. So they need to heal that aspect within themselves first. And from there, relearning the beauty in community. So, so small steps, that's kind of how I would see it. Does it make sense to you? Oh, yes, definitely. Oh, it's good. Because I, uh, I had, um, uh, well, I, I, I was teaching a group uh, a while ago, but I, I started at the other end of the spectrum. I started with the community, right? Like this is a collective where you put mm -hmm. yourself aside. And uh, this was way too difficult for people. Yeah. I mean, they, they really loved the idea of it. Everyone, they, they got into it with this wild enthusiasm, enthusiasm and, and love, right? But yeah. when they actually got there, it was too difficult. So I, yeah. I realized that I, I needed to, to make a change. So what you're saying is, is definite, it does definitely make sense to me. That's uh, good because they need they, to heal it they, in themselves first yeah yeah the individual part because often what happens with these people is that they they gave too much away from themselves they never really mm -hmm. learned this thing about being who they are so then they, they claim it but they claim it in the form where they hang on to all the bad stuff right mm -hmm. and and it's to learn them that individually they need to to heal the bad things see themselves as full but without the resistance <laughs> upon everything around them, because then they keep creating this distance from them to others. But that in itself is a trauma. The mm. disattachment is as big as a trauma as the attachment trauma is. But it's, um, yeah, step by step for sure. You need to yes. go in before they can go out. There's no, there's no uh, bypassing in this one. Then it doesn't heal for sure. <laughs> yes. And I, I need to be patient with it yeah. because I, I can, yeah. <laughs> and I, uh, I'm like you, uh, the thing you said about being alone for most of your life. And so yeah. I'm, of course, I'm longing for this community now. Uh, but I, I also need to make space for others to do the same, like healing journey. And I can't decide, of course, how long that's going to take. Um, no, and for you, it's just about, owning your energy and being aware of your needs and um, also embracing the individual journey. I, I know, I think we are at the same place, you and me. Like I've been on my own a lot. And, and lately I realized that I have great people around me helping me, like bless be my heart. But you know, the, the feeling when, when you're used to being fully yourself, even there's people around you, you still feel kind of, alone yes. so <laughs> so it's this uh, thing where i'm realizing that community in this time especially in the shift we are working through now is so important and the only way that we can do that is to uh, bring us to the table but also to become aware that that we are part of this whole so so we send it out and i think that this community feeling that we are longing for like you and me and probably a lot of others is because the world right now, the, the focus is to disconnect. The focus is to uh, be in shame, be in fear, be against each other. So as more this focus is rolled out upon reality, as more sensitive people like, like us becomes like, no, 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 community, let's include any everyone. <laughs> so it's a natural part of the shift which is going on. Mm. And it is so important. And I understand your impatience by far <laughs> but it is in the making and people will be ready because inside everybody's longing for belonging mm. um, but the road there is they, they need to go inside and they need to feel and understand that from the in from within because mm. or else we're going to create attachment issues without <laughs> the community feeling where you bring your true self to the table it's this season is all about authenticity 
authenticity and linking the mind and the heart together and community. Then you have 2022. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> I thought that 2021 was like interesting enough. <laughs> no, that was just chaos. <laughs> yeah. oh. Interesting yeah. chaos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, and um, I have another question. Mm -hmm. uh, if that's all right with you of course uh, and it's about uh, the pyramids of Egypt because mm -hmm. uh, I don't know a lot about you but I uh, as far as I understand you have a lot of like insights about pyramids <laughs> yes uh, that's, that's my thing <laughs> oh good then good I just like triangle no. <laughs> then I come to the right place Uh, okay um there is it's something about those pyramids uh mm -hmm. it was when i was I, i feel as if they are calling me um mm -hmm. but i don't really know why uh when i was uh, 18 and i could travel uh, abroad for the first time in my life alone i just went to the pyramids Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why and this was uh, long before my spiritual awakening so it wasn't for spiritual reasons it was just intuitively I just went to see the pyramids um, and, and now like fast forward more than 10 years <laughs> into the future uh, I've created a, a, a program for people for creative people on mm -hmm. how to free their creativity and overcome blockages and self-doubt and so on. Mm -hmm. And after I created this program, I found out that some of the ideas or maybe like the most profound ideas in this program actually resonates with the, the thoughts, I mean, the religious perspective from age, an ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea. Right? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so can you can you tell me something? What what you know? What's the connection? So, why why are the pyramids so relevant today? The, the thing about the pyramids is that one thing is that they are part of this world grid. Another thing is that um, the memories are, and the knowledge the, the memories and the knowledge which lies within the time age that they were combined and, and and the dimension they are linked to um, it's kind of free to enter at these spaces uh, you yourself is a hybrid right you're not only human so therefore you are also linked to the times of the pyramids and long before that and some of the aliens creation that came down to earth in that period and a few centuries later so you have so much memory of the knowledge and the integration from that timeline that it, it appears naturally in your system because in this life we're supposed to use it for good. <laughs> we're supposed to uh, bring it back so a consciousness rises within uh, our planet system. Uh, now they tell me it is already raised, right? Well, okay, so humans <laughs> becomes more aware of it, okay? <laughs> they always have this, oh, we're going to correct what you were saying kind of thing. <laughs> It's like, yeah, sorry, mate um so so yeah that it, it's it's when when your soul are linked to that knowledge and and just are are created to pass on the frequencies and and etc there's no way around it you feel drawn to it it comes naturally uh personally i didn't go a lot to school don't tell the kids um <laughs> And, and I never watched documentaries and blah, 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 whatever. Everything I know just stomped down to my head. So at some point when I realized it, because some, I had this coach, you know, I had this trainer and he asked me all these smart ass questions because he wanted to show me I was stupid. He was a boxing trainer. Oh. And, and I just answered, shit, I had no clue what I was saying. And the whole club just became silent. You know, it's like, where do you know that from? And I was like, I'm just guessing. <laughs> so that was the first time I became aware of like, oh, I just have the answer. Cool. <laughs> I 
So I, don't, I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm familiar with the phenomenon, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I'm wondering, like, why can we use the pyramids as actual, I mean, the actual, uh, like, physical buildings? Yes, yes and no. So they are constructed with sacred geometry forms and shapes, which means that they, they, they hold on and they transcend energy. It's part of their creation. That's why they are placed all around the globe the way that they are. They have been disconnected for a longer period of time. So some, some places they're radiating more out, some places they're holding more in, some places there's unbalance, you feel different layers of consciousness, etc. But they were created for being used you know hmm. so the real uh, answer is yes <laughs> but at the same time it will take uh, reactivation rediscovering and a lot of consciousness to do so but if it's a feeling and a call in your heart there is no other way than that road believe it believing in believe in it because it is real that was what i was trying to say well put. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that was actually my questions. I had those two about mm -hmm. the collective and, and the pyramids. And um, I'm oh. also, of course, you know, curious to know, is there anything else in your channel that is just um, like a message for me or something like that? When we see you, we see so many layers of consciousness. We see so many different uh, dimensions. Because one thing is you are, you are linked to uh, Mother Earth, clearly. But you also have this out of space kind of... Uh, you are a different being. When I see you, I don't see a lot of humans. So you are definitely brought here to, to bring a lot of awareness, knowledge, and bringing people together. Um, you feel misunderstood often. <laughs> and, and have a hard time actually fully expressing yourself in the form that you feel that you are inside because maybe there is a bit of recapitulation that needs to still come back into oneness but we just want you to know that you are so seen and so loved from so many different angles and planet systems so even if you do feel once in a while <clears throat> once in a while he <laughs> alone down here <laughs> Just know you are not because you are a representer of so many species at the same time. Um, and you are absolutely beautiful. We don't have any of these, uh, you should watch out for this or that or blah, blah, blah. The only thing that they keep doing like this and telling me is that just to tell you how much you are loved and how absolutely amazing you are in our eyes. So keep on doing uh, what you're doing and they of course can cheat because they can be right next to you but I will uh, look forward to meeting you in real life thank you so much you're that's so yeah that's I, I think I really needed to hear that uh, and it, it resonates a lot with me that's um, good we're glad <laughs> thank you so much yeah and I really want to meet you in person as well gonna be um it's gonna be a blast it's gonna be fun <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> boom in the most wonderful way <laughs> <laughs> galaxies will explode <laughs> mm -hmm. yes just to rebuild again <laughs> that's wonderful thank you so much thank you too okay YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of me and Hannah. And if you have any comments or questions to any of us or about whatever we've been talking about, then just uh, write it in the comments below. And if you have not done it yet, then click the subscribe button. And I think there's a like button and just click everything you can. Just not too many times so it unclicks. And for the rest, I just want to say thank you for watching with us. And uh, you're amazing, whoever you are, you are amazing. And I will see you next week. Dinner!